Hello everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. The title of this video is The Tweeners, A Graceless Gospel. Well, the first thing you're probably wondering is what does tweener mean? Well, tweener is just a short form of the word between. People who are between two positions, therefore holding neither position. Uh, they, they do not fall on the side of grace for salvation. They do not fall on the side of works for salvation. They're trying to somehow straddle the fence and uh, have a little bit of both. Therefore, they would be called a tweener. Now, the, the, the word tweener, uh, I heard originally from a brother here on YouTube a couple of years ago that I've talked to privately about this, and he confessed that in the past he had been a tweener. He, was, he wanted to believe in free grace, but he was still holding on to uh, uh, works to a certain extent, somehow uh, thinking that uh, at least works have to be there to, you know, uh, maintain salvation or prove your salvation, even if works are not needed to, to initially uh, receive the salvation. So he was kind of straddling the fence, not fully committed to either side, and called himself a tweener. But he said that he saw the light, and now he was completely a, a free grace believer. And he said that he was going to make a video on this topic. Uh, he told me this a, two years ago, and then about a year ago he told me the same thing. And he has yet to make the video. So that's why I'm making this video now. Uh, and I, I hope that he has a good reason for not making it. I, I hope he has not regressed and fallen from grace and gone back to this tweener state. So now it's time to see some scriptures uh, so we can understand the problem with being a tweener. Let's first look at Romans 11.6. Here we have it in the King James Version. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, Grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Um, that's very clear cut to me, but I, I assume that there's a lot of people that uh, just don't seem to understand this. Maybe it's the, the old English, uh, but it's saying basically uh, that... Uh, it's got to either be completely grace or completely works. Uh, you cannot somehow have a blend of works and grace uh, because it just destroys the whole thing either way. Uh, so if, if you're having a hard time with this old English, let's look at a modern translation. Maybe this will uh, make it more clear to you. Uh, and if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it were... Grace would no longer be grace. I hope you're starting to get the point that you have to be completely free grace, that works have no part in attaining salvation. Works have no part in maintaining salvation. Works have no part in proving one's salvation. As soon as you add just a little bit of works at all, then grace is no more grace. You've poisoned it. You've committed adultery. It's no longer pure grace. It's adulterated. It's spoiled. Well, here's, a, here's a, one that's a, called the Amplified Version to, to, to explain it even further for you if you still don't get this. But if it is by grace, his unmerited favor and graciousness. It is no longer conditioned on works or anything men have done. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. It would be meaningless. So, if, if you think that um, 
the grace of God is insufficient. That faith in Jesus Christ for your salvation and the grace of, of God is not enough for your salvation. That somehow, in some way, your personal works, your personal merit factors into it at all, then it says that the grace would no longer be grace. It would be meaningless. So I hope you're starting to get this now, that uh, you have to choose a side. You have to put your faith completely in your own personal merit and forget the grace of God and just plead your case saying that, God, uh, judge me based upon my personal merit alone. Uh, I'm, I'm good enough. I've never sinned in my life. I'm perfect. And therefore, I deserve eternal life in heaven. If you're prepared to do that, then you can present your case based upon works, personal merit. But if you understand the futility of that, then and you will understand then that your need for the grace of God, and you receive this grace through faith in Jesus Christ uh, alone, believe that Jesus is the solution to the problem, not you are not the solution. That you need to depend completely on Jesus rather than putting your faith in yourself. Uh, once you come to that conclusion, then you've moved from works to grace, but you can't stop in the middle. You can't straddle the fence. Otherwise, you're, you're pleading your case to God neither on your own works or neither on grace. It's, it's a tweener, and it's uh, useless. Now, another verse addresses this problem, too. Let's look at Galatians 2.21. In the KJV it says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I do not frustrate the grace of God. This grace of God is the fact that God is gracious towards us. Not desiring that any of us should perish, he graciously offers eternal life to us, to everyone as a free gift, simply because he's that gracious, that loving, that merciful. But in this verse, Paul says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Frustrate. Think about what frustrate means. It means then that uh, Christ dead, death would be in vain. Now, if it's a little confusing to you in the KJV, We'll look at another modern translation. It says, I do not nullify the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly. Now, here it's saying, rather than frustrate, it's saying nullify. Nullify means to cancel out. It means that it's null and void. It has no effect at all. And it says that you have made Christ's death on the cross for our sins as a needless act. Now, we'll look at it again. Another translation, if you still don't get it, it says, I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. That's what you are doing if you are not a free gracer. If you believe that you're justified by your works, or if you believe that somehow works factor in in any way, then you have uh, treated the grace of God as meaningless. And you are saying that Christ died for nothing. There was no need for Christ to die. Finally, we'll look at this amplified version because it amplifies, it, it, it expounds upon the meanings of this verse. It says, therefore, I do not treat God's gracious gift as something of minor importance and defeat its very purpose. I do not set aside and invalidate 
and frustrate and nullify the grace, which is unmerited favor of God. For if justification, that is righteousness, acquittal from guilt, comes through observing the ritual of the law, then Christ, our Messiah, our Savior, died groundlessly and to no purpose and in vain. His death was then wholly superfluous. Well, I think that uh, the case is clearly made. I, I hope that you are finally convinced that you need to go 100% on the side of grace, on the side of faith, on the side of Jesus. You need to have zero faith in yourself, zero faith in your works, zero faith in your personal merit. Because as soon as you have even 1% faith in yourself, you've canceled out, you've nullified, you've frustrated, You've made of no value or purpose the grace of God and the sacrificial death of Jesus for our sins. So uh, I hope this is clear to everybody now. Choose. Choose free grace. Choose salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, and reject your own personal merit, your own works, faith in yourself. Reject it completely. Do not try to mix it again. Do not let me call you a tweener. I look forward to all your comments. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.